uh, hello. So let me welcome my brother Akon to uh, the Karen Hunter Show. Of course, we're here, and uh, you are such a controversial figure. First of all, let me just say um, hello and thank you. I have uh, known you for a bit, and uh, you're one of the wisest, uh, most intelligent people that I know. And Thanks. So when you start trending about things, I know it's taken out of context and it's frustrating that we live in a world where people take sound bites and headlines and they run with it. Right. <laughs> so, so you said black people need to get over slavery in a two hour well, interview. <laughs> it, it, it didn't really, I, I mean, it's actually good though. Cause I, I like the fact that it sparks the conversation and I think we don't talk about it enough. And sometimes you know, you get into this mind state that you feel that things supposed to happen the way you want it to happen. And we never get into the realization that things are going to happen to what allow, uh, uh, basically what we allow to happen is gonna continue to happen. Let me ask you, uh, you, you were raised in synagogue. We've had this conversation before and you come to America and back and forth and your, your father was a great musician and a brilliant man and, and introduced you and your, and your family, your brothers and sisters to a lot so your perspective on the world is a lot different than many of us who have only seen the world. Right. Like right. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that experience. Um, well, the good thing is, like, well, let's start with music, because that's what I'm pretty much known for, right? I grew up listening to all kinds of music. I mean, I was raised around jazz, and that's why I'm not really a big jazz fan, because that's all I used to listen to constantly, so I don't want to hear no more jazz, right? <laughs> Um, but then I got, you know, engulfed into hip hop because of the surroundings I was actually hanging out in at the time. I f you know, the good thing is we was all lived, like my dad and my mom was pretty, you know, they was okay. You know, my dad was a professor in multiple universities, starting in SIU in East St. Louis, and then went to Miami, University of Miami, then Atlanta at Clark Atlanta. And like, he just kind of moved around, you know, Orlando with Disney. So what ended up happening was I was always exposed to so many different cultures in so many different places just within the United States alone. That's not even including all the musical, you know, stuff that I incurred when I was in Africa. But ultimately, it opened the doors for me to just explore different cultures, understand different things. And in Africa, you're taught different from how you're taught in the U.S. because you, you're kind of taught from a more overall global perspective. Whereas in the U.S., everything is tied and geared to United States history, United States rules and regulations, and everything is based around U.S. history. And ultimately, if you're a Black African American and you're being taught U.S. history and not African history, you're clearly going to, and, and, and then the, you got to understand the, the school's uh, curriculum is based around not diversity, but white history and white way of things and how it's done, all the way down to you being a slave and being taught how to behave, how to talk, you mm -hmm. know, how. So it, it all boils back down to you being confined in this little space, right? So what ends up happening is everything that happens that we quite don't feel should happen the way it should happen for black people, we blame it on the times of slavery. And, and it's actually 100% true. Slavery is to blame for the behaviors of African Americans today, but we can't blame slavery on growth. Does that make sense? And so... <laughs> You know, I sit here, you know, someone who every day, if you have to think about what people won't let you do, you'll never do anything. If you're always right. focusing on, so, I, so when, when I saw it, I was like, I know what the brother is saying, but timing, you know, we're in a pandemic, we're in a racial pandemic. It's more of a better time to get the hell out of here. <laughs> so so what's, your, what's your solution? Right. Your solution is we should, we should leave, uh, we should leave America. T tell me, tell me, should, should black people pick up and leave? Hey, pick up all your bags, get the hell out of here. Like, go, go home. And I guarantee you, half the stuff that you're dealing with, you won't deal with no more. All the, you know, the, the stress that you're dealing with all goes away. All the opportunities that you're lacking all comes back. All the, you know, the information that, you, that you're yearning, that, you know, to, to then, you know, like your identity is even revealed over and over again. And you're surrounded by people just like you that come from your root. So now you get a better idea of what it is that you've been facing and feeling like you've been missing for hundreds of years. And I think even if it's just to take a vacation or take a, a trip, just to go there, but it's like, we've been brainwashed so much over here that even if you even mention Africa, you start to shake. You don't even know why. I, I, got, I had the pleasure of going to Ghana and uh, 
in December, December, 2019. And, you know, as a black American, I didn't feel the connection that I thought I would feel, but at the same time, I completely understand colonization is a thing right? You know, that, you know, as I, as I'm driving down the road, seeing white Jesus and the skin bleaching ads, I'm like, okay, there's a lot of pain that we have to un, unearth here. Right. For black Americans, the institution of slavery is so indoctrinated. I mean, you're talking about 400 years of teaching somebody how to hate themselves, teaching right. somebody where their place is going to be. Right. Colonization didn't last that long, yet it was just as indelible for so many people. And we should be able to talk about this, too. We should be able to have these conversations. Why did Absolutely. you move up now, though? Why now, I, Akon? No, because the thing is, we've never gotten over the pain and the hurt. So every time something is mentioned, we take offense to it. But the offense is good because it allows you to actually engulf with the feeling and the emotion that comes with it. Now, the conversation helps you to define that emotion and why you feel that way. But we're so afraid to be, you know, unveiled by the truth that and whenever someone says something that, that actually is true, we get offended, which is okay because you need that offense. You need that feeling because that helps you to define what it is that we need to talk about and how do we open up the conversations to get that feeling rid of. So it, it really, it actually, I feel like, you know, even the sound bites that was put out, I think it did great justice, even though obviously people might say, oh, Akon tripping, man, fuck that nigga. It's cool <laughs> because I don't mind being the guy to blame for the overall conversation for us to become better people and understand better what situations we're facing. So your goal is freedom for all. I know that for a fact, because we've Everybody. been, you know, right. um, and I love the moves you've been making in energy, which people don't talk about, in, in, in finance, which people don't talk about. I didn't right. like Takashi 6 9 but again, you know, we don't have to like every move. Some, right. Some, I mean, what was I, that? What was that, Akon? You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, like, okay, let's say prime example. Let's say Takashi, for instance, right? There's a lot of people I feel that just rise the bandwagon, right, when it comes to him. He's just an entertaining guy. To him, it's all entertainment. To everybody else, they actually take that and uh, add that to their real life. And for the people that take it and add to their real life, that's the part that makes me laugh because half the people that's uh, like taking it from a real life perspective ain't even street affiliated. They don't even live by that code itself. So but he why? snitched though, Akon. He's a snitch. You work for a snitch. What was that? <laughs> and it's even funnier when you got corporate, corporate people saying, oh, he's a snitch. Like, who cares, nigga? You ain't. What are you to the streets? Absolutely none. Why does it matter to you? Like now, if it was if it was some real street dudes, yes, I get it, cause that's their life, that's their code. This is every day for them. But the average people that just kind of just want to be in the wind of opening doors to make you or feel like they are somehow affiliated to the street, and they get offended by him talking about somebody else. If he was talking about you, yeah, I get it. But he's talking about somebody that has nothing. You don't even know these people or been affiliated to what they got going on. So that's a personal issue that he has to deal with with those people. Now, what he does from a musical standpoint, as a marketer, he's a genius. As a person, I mean, super funny. He just makes me laugh all day. I just like him. I don't know. I mean, he's my man. So that's just me. And I'm going to hold it down for him from what I know of him. But up now, what everyone else is dealing with that, I mean, that, that's, I guess it's up to everybody to deal with people how they see it fit but i just don't feel that you should bring stress into your life that's not necessary that's all all right final question because i know you got to go and I'm, i appreciate you jumping on really quickly what about people saying akon's out of touch you've been rich for so long <laughs> you've been you know successful for so long and maybe your lens now is right. seen through a very uh you know privileged perspective and you don't really see what's happening the drumbeat that's going on in the streets and how people are feeling about the current climate in the, right. the globe and because this is not just happening in america across the globe we are seeing these uprisings and people right. throwing off the yokes of these, these chains what do you say to that well you mean to them what i say to them what it's not mean? me touch it's actually them that's out of touch hmm. they must have forgot where i came from i came from that same area i just figured out a way to get out of it I ain't forgot what that is. I just see other things now that's affected by what you're dealing with. But it's your choice to stay there. Do you want to continue to touch that struggle or you want to be out of touch and touch something else? I prefer to be out of touch. Like nobody, nobody lives to be comfortable in the hood. Like who does that? 
Well, and then if you, wait, hold you know, on. The people who buy the, the fancy cars and drive them into the projects <laughs> and, and have them tripped out with the, the, the big screen TVs and the leather couches in the projects that they don't own. Yes, there are people that make the hood comfortable. I don't no, know. These are people that buy a $100,000, $200,000 car before they buy a house. Like, I don't understand. Like, if that's being out of touch, I'm cool with being out of touch. But I know one thing. I don't have to touch it to know it exists, right? And I think a lot of people, they, they, they got their priorities from a mental standpoint twisted because we were just, we was never taught to organize real value. We are taught to, you know, uh, uh, you could say glorify value. See, when you can organize value, then you know, the, then you truly know the worth of it. Then you can move it around a certain kind of way for it to benefit you. But if you don't know what value is worth, yeah, you're going to just go out there and splurge it and throw it out the window. And they're not even utilize that full value of what it really is. And I think it comes back to education and educating yourself. So it's not a matter, it's not a matter of being in touch or out of touch. Because no one can sit here and challenge me with my knowledge of what I've learned by being in those circles. I've learned so much and understand so much from a different perspective. It's a matter of them just paying attention to what life really consists of and why you're living in the first place. When you can answer that question to yourself, then it won't be about in touch, out of touch, because we're all in touch. We're in touch with each other. We're just not communicating enough. You, you haven't lied yet. All right, we got to go. Uh, I want to have you back on and talk about your thruple. Your, your, <laughs> you still, <laughs> still entangled with five different women. All right, we'll talk about that later, Akon. Uh, <laughs> there you, you go. I had to throw it. I had to throw it in there. You know, <laughs> you gonna get you gonna get me. All right, listen. Um, stay safe. I appreciate you. Uh, you seem to be living lovely. I love your ceiling fans. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I got you. Out here, huh? I'm in California. It's as hot as Africa out here. Well, it's probably hotter. Africa is like a nice heat. It, it's a, it's a nice heat. Yeah. All right. Let's let's agree to meet up in Senegal like next year when COVID is done. I would love to. I would love to see Senegal through your eyes. Man, let's go. All right. Akon, <laughs> hey, appreciate you. Nah, you too. Thank you, man. All right.